Welcome back to part two of adapting a basic skirt block with Inkscape. I'm Maggie from Half Size Mannequins and Corkwood Knitting and Crafts. So let us continue where we left off from part one. So this is where we finished off the first time and now we have a new half front for an A-line skirt but all we have is the line and nothing else. So the first thing I want to do is just align this correctly. So with the select tool, I'm just going to click on the line, click on it twice. With the rotate handles, I'm going to pull this round so the center front where the fold line is going to be is vertical. There, that looks a bit better. Now I'd like to add a seam allowance. There, now there isn't a ready-made facility for this in Inkscape, but there is a workaround. And this time I'm going to use the path outset command. But before we before we actually use this, we need to edit the size of the outs the outset in preferences. So for this we go to edit, and then we go down to preferences, and then we we. First of all, we would have chosen tools, and then we go down to behaviors there, and then from behaviors, we find steps. So this is buried deep down in the program. And for me, and for my computer screen, the best outset I like is at 10 pixels. There are these other choices. Some of them may or may not work on your screen, but for this one, I'm using 10 pixels. So I'll just close it out here. So what the outset means is it actually, it, it cha it's like scaling, so it changes the size of the line, but we need to maintain the original. So we're going to, first of all, with the select tool, we're going to select that, then we're going to go to edit, and we're going to copy. And then we're going to go back to edit again, and paste in place. So now this looks exactly the same, but it isn't, because actually when we hit path and when we hit outset here now it's made a second line with with the line that the outset is made i then want to change that line with the fill in stroke panel so i can see which, which is the seam allowance line so i'll go to fill in stroke so stroke style i might slightly increase the width of that line and i think i want to make that into a dashed line so I'll choose one of these options there and when we click away from it there we have our two separate lines and there is a seam allowance. So there's a, a bit of a problem here because the centre front line is actually a fold line so we don't want seam allowance on, on, on the right hand side here. So the way we get around this that we'll go to our node tool and then we'll activate that line. And then what we're going to do, we're going to break that line. At, so we'll select this point here, and then we go up here. That's break path at selected notes. So break that. At the minute, it doesn't look like it's done anything, but it has. And we're going to do the same thing down, down here. We're going to highlight that, and we're going to break the line at the node. And now when I hover over this, Actually, you can you can see these are now separate. So just for the minute, I'm going to pull this apart there. And when I hover over here, this piece is entirely separate now. So now we move the pieces apart. Well, we can delete this section here. So we'll just highlight that hit the delete key and then we're just going to click on this node and then we're going to like drag it back so it's vertical and we just might need to slightly play with the line a little little bit to make it look right so we go there the same with the bottom click on that pull it back so it's in line with the vertical center front and then 
we'll click away and then we have a line so that so the last thing we need to do is just fill in the corner so we'll highlight that again I'll go to my bezier tool which is bezier curves and straight lines and then we're lit literally just going to draw that little bit in so click on that click to that corner this can all be adjusted later by the way D double click on that and the same thing here click on that click on that double click click away and now we have the half front with the fold line at the front and a nice piece of seam allowance I'm now going to select all of the pieces I've done so far and then I'm going to go to object and then group so what this means is now these pieces move together so there we go I'll move that towards the bottom of the page so now we'll want a, a waistband and in reality you would have done the front and back pieces to get the proper measurements but at least I'll show you how we can get a measurement for waist pieces so what I'm going to do in on this occasion I'm going to make a special layer just for the measurements so we go on over to our layers panel and then I'm going to add another layer so I'm calling this layer measurements because we're going to get rid of it after we've finished work so there's measurements and it's added to it and then I'm going to lock work layer 2 just for the minute so we don't accidentally mess with that so in order to get a measurement on a curved line well the easiest thing I found to do is to use my pen tool again and then I'm just going to copy the line which is actually going to be the measurement line so which is it's not the one with the seam allowance it's, it's the actual line itself so I'm just copying that as best I can and you can see it's been highlighted now so so that's actual because it's on a separate layer it's separate from the main piece but this is the area I want to measure so I go to extensions visualize path measure path and this box pops up so you can choose your units here I like working in centimeters so I'll leave it there you can have live pre live we're trying to have live preview there we go now if I pull that away I don't know if you can see that you can change the size of the font but we're not doing it now it says 8.57 centimeters well I don't actually want that marked on the pattern but I am going to keep that that number for calculating what the waistband should be so I'll actually close it without leaving it we'll close this box without applying it once you finish with the measurements layer we won't get rid of it just yet but we will turn it off so it doesn't mess up the line now I've returned back to my working layer which was work layer 2 and um, now we're going to do a waistband piece so I, I've calculated just for the front piece and it's 17.14 centimeters so as it's a square piece I can actually start off with using the rectangle tool I'm going to make any size rectangle at the minute because that doesn't matter because we're going to change the size up here so I've calculated for this that I want 171 millimeters so we'll put that in there the, the millimeters are showing here you can have other dimensions but we have milli millimeters set and then here I want 30 millimeters height remember this is a half size pattern and then we press enter and at the minute so with with the fill that we don't want this blue so we're going to leave it with no color the stroke we're going to 
we'll leave that as black and the stroke style we're just gonna just increase the size just a wee bit sorry just to see where we are so that's all good and and then now I'm actually going to take this line because a square is an object and we want a path and we'll explain that in further videos but we're going to have objects a path because those paths are, are, are easier to to edit I like them better and then I think I'm just going to move that into the center there and I'm going to do the same thing with creating an offset so I'm going to do like edit copy edit paste in place and then we're going to do the same thing with path and with outset and then we're going to go to stroke style and I'm going to have a dash line here as well and then I think I might have made it a different colour, but you can make it whatever you like. Remember when you're doing the waistband f for yourself that you have to consider the uh, width all the way round and also the seam allowances and what openings you're going to have as well. I'm now going to select both of these squares and I'm going to make sure that that these are group together so that when we move it that they move together as well so, so now these have been like grouped separately but but they move move with their seam line so that's all looking good now what I want to do is add a few more things to it so first of all I'm going to add a little bit of text because I want to show people where the fold line is so let me put that center of the picture so we'll go over to our text tool and I'm going to just write a fold line because I chose the text tool there's all these other options for for, for the font styles for, for its size all, all sorts of things that you would get in a normal word panel anyway that there, there it is like so I'm going to go back to the select tool because, and then I'm going to have to be a little bit careful here. So we want to rotate, rotate the words here because it's going into the center like that. So at this point you can add whatever you like onto it, whatever little markers. One thing that I like to do, especially because this is going to be printed out as a PDF is is actually make a size square so that when it's printed out that you can you can check with the ruler that it's printing correctly so all I'm doing here I'm doing the same thing I'm I'm guess, getting another rectangle then I'm making I'm just being like really general so up here on the the width I'm going to make it five centimeters by five centimeters so we'll just go 50 millimeters here fifty millimeters there so that's a five centimeter by five centimeters square so we'll go to the fill I don't want a, a blue square so same thing with the stroke paint we want to see the square there we go we're happy with that so you can you can click on that anywhere and then I might just add a bit of text so we'll go back over to the text tool and I'll just put measurement square and its dimensions so five centimeters oops five centimeters times five centimeters so I just use the select tool just oops we can pull that size it then what we're going to do we're going to we want to group all those t 
together so we're going to go back to the select tool we'll just we'll just select all everything in didn't do it that time we'll se select everything in that area and then we'll group that hopefully sometimes it doesn't work and you have to do it twice but yeah no that's all that's all like moving together so so there we have these two separate pieces so for a piece of paper and because we don't want to waste a lot of paper we'll place place these in a way that we think will waste the least and then with that in the center with the select tool we're actually going to select all of these and then we're going to group them again just so that they're just for the minute you can ungroup them so you can edit everything independently but just for this we're going to group them all and then we're going to go to file we're going to go to document properties and we're going to go to resize page to drawing or selection so now you can see that the outline of the page fits what we've done so no waste so we can close that down here at this point here I'm going to save this out as an Inkscape SVG that's for if it needs further editing so we go file save as and I'll just I'll, I'll call this a uh, test skirt and we'll save that out like that the next thing I'm going to do I'm just going over to the layers panel and I want to keep work layer 2 I don't need the layer which had the measurements on it so um, it's locked at the minute we'll un unlock it there and then right click and I'm going to delete that layer there and actually we don't need these other layers work layer 1 which was invisible and actually the base picture for the original so we don't need those anymore so we'll actually lock work layer 2 so we don't accidentally delete it we will right click on work layer 1 we'll delete that one and we don't need the base picture uh, we don't need the base picture so we'll right click on that and we'll delete that as well so that's just tidying up the file so now we're ready to save it out for PDF ready for print so we just file and then we do save as on the drop down menu it's there press save we'll keep it at its defaults you can alter that but you can look into that press ok and there we have it we ha we have our file saved as a PDF ready for print Oh, just remember when you're printing out your PDFs make sure that all scaling is off because you do want accurate measurements and check your measurement square is correct uh, that that will tell you whether that's all working so that's it for today thank you for watching I hope you found something useful in this video and see you the next time bye